let me start with um, Mr. Bernard. You journeyed from Accra to Tamale here mm -hmm. to, to see the, our famous, mysterious Gandhi. When um, Mr. Ryan first uh, talked about the idea of acquiring this place and maybe perhaps they just you a little bit of history of the place, um, what, what was your reaction? Oh, um, I don't think I would have had a negative reaction um, already. Um, generally, I also know uh, Ibrahim's practice uh, nations or failure of states to uh, carry forward uh, certain developmental projects or plans. And so uh, to um, get, to be able to acquire this space, which uh, itself symbolizes uh, some of these failures, and to um, think of turning it into something that uh, becomes profitable, uh, not necessarily in a, in a monetary sense, but profitable culturally for uh, a city like Tamale. I, I, I think it was just the way to go. So I was uh, quite excited about it. And uh, I had seen it before, actually. There's, there's a story of us uh, being there once and um, uh, I was mistaken because I, I have my <laughs> yes. special head. I was mistaken. So I was there and Ibrahim and some of our colleagues were there. And uh, so the guys who usually use the place yes. were coming to protect Ibrahim against me. <laughs> they thought I was uh, uh, trying to uh, um, swindle, swindle, swindle or okay. the, the word they were to scam no, into yeah. buying the place. Okay. That was a joke we had. Uh, right. Then yeah. and then now, rather it is uh, it has come <laughs> to a reality that you have acquired the. Oh okay. yes, yeah. all right. Yeah. I guess it's a very now personal bodyguards. Now <laughs> <laughs> those guys, you know, when I was uh, when I was in negotiation to acquire it, a lot of people used to come, yeah. and then like people in big cars would come yeah. and come and expect the place. Mm. So the guys who come is that Mr. Brian, what's happening? Mm. Like some people have been coming here, blah blah blah. And I said, oh, don't worry, everything is under control. I'm in mm -hmm. conversation with the government people, and then we are going to acquire the place. Blah, blah, blah. So when people came there, they were really protected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One time I, I met the government, and they said, ah, have I uh, assigned some people? Assign people some? And I said, no, like, they're just friends and sympathizers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, that is very important to also, uh, as I think I also mentioned yesterday, how uh, people, everyday people, protect something that needs to be protected. You know, in this sense that uh, nobody had assigned them to do it. But I, I, in a way, maybe they, they felt the need to protect such a space, such a heritage. And so uh, when, uh, I mean, I, I, and if nobody uh, uh, forces you to protect something, and yet out of your own will, you decide to protect them, it is worth Protecting. And so it is good also that um, it is somebody like Ibrahim who has acquired it. So that, the, um, because I can imagine if it is some capitalist, some uh, big business person, obviously when the place becomes what it's supposed to be, those people who used to protect it will no longer even have access yes. to it. So I think in the way that it's acquired and the way that the plans to make activate the space, it's probably going to be helpful to those people who have always been protected. So still on you before I get to Mr. Ryan. Right? Yesterday, um, you were present from somewhere around midday to night. Um, what would you say about the reception of the whole event? Um, yeah, okay. I mean, um, it is a talk. Or the event was advertised as a public lecture, oh, yeah. as a talk. So. Um, Generally, my expectation was that it would be um, attended by very few people. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, I, that's what I would expect because even I function in the space of a, 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 an a, a academy. I work at the Kwame University of Science and Technology. And even where that place where um, it is known that people give talks and lectures, um, we have to <laughs> encourage people to attend. Yeah, but. Uh, for this, I realized that um, it was uh, quite well attended, uh, contrary even to the so-called uh, uh, COVID uh, fears that people don't want to gather and things. 
but quite a number of people came, and they came in good time. Um, I also noticed that people, I, 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 as with all events project, guests were coming, but also people were trying to help. Yes. So it's not. Um, there was one man who came and said, "How should he help?" Oh, the yes. agriculturalist. Yes, yes, he said, "How should he help?" Yes. And when we said, "He should just sit there and relax." He felt, he said he was useless. useless. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, people came well, they attended well, and they also were ready to help. So I think when the society or the community feels that it's something that is inclusive, they all lend a hand. And this is what I saw there. I, I, I was very uh, uh, impressed that it was very well attended and that um, also, you know, the, the sharing of nose masks, uh, yeah, people took it. Uh, people were not offended, and uh, and then it was well, I mean, well distributed, the seating and everything. Um, so, even for the dangers posed by the place, the, the iron rods and things, people were able to ma uh, maneuver or uh, um, find a way of sitting there. There was no uh, particular uh, casualty and everything. So I think once the place has been act activated, I think it is now uh, incumbent on us to make it work. Now people have seen that it is possible. So I'm sure people will be looking for the next event, what will happen there. And somebody even asked yesterday, uh, after this, what, what is going to happen here? Uh, I think when it is done like that, then those people who have always been protecting it would also find their, their space and uh, do something. So it was good. Okay. So, boss. Um, First question is uh, acquiring this place. I know um, you, if I'm going to, I don't know your age, according to Wikipedia, no one knows where you were born or <laughs> where my mother was. That's why we don't ask Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and because you acquiring this huge space and also historical space, which has to do with um, a man who believed in this. Pan African Namalai movement and everything that I think his vision and you coming to acquire like your talk you said it's kind of a, like a timeline yes. where you can travel back and forth and all that the first day you you started doing your research on on these spaces um, did you actually think that you could you would acquire it one day and do something with it I <coughs> when I first started working approaching this building it's because in accra um when you are in my house i live in kokumi okay. and where my house is when you are in the top floor like in my mother's bathroom yeah. and you're taking a shower you see one of the buildings the one that is in accra okay and even when i get out of my house and i walk a bit up the hill i see it so it's in my face and i even remember when i was in high school i was learning how to drive and i that area is very quiet on mm -hmm. sundays we used to go and drive around the, area, the industrial area. So I'm very familiar with it. And I've seen it change. Sometimes you realize that they're trying to paint it, they're trying to put, but it's never activated or never put into use. In 2015, there was a project I was working on with uh, Black Star Lines. Bernard was very active in it. Uh, Salon and then uh, Benjamin I, uh, and some of our colleagues. Mm -hmm. And it was titled the Exchange Exchanger, which was basically this work where we were taking the jute sacks and covering buildings across the university campus, affordable housing in Kumasi, Accra. And in Accra, the silo was one of them, okay. yes. So um, I got to learn more about it, even the history, like those that owned it and all that. And then I said, oh, but um, maybe I can, maybe there are more examples of these buildings around. That was my first point of entry, mm -hmm. early part of 2015. Uh, the early part of 15, but we did a project late 15. Yeah. So by the time the project was realized, in uh, January, I made a trip to Hope and then I saw one of the silos there. And then I, I saw it from afar, just like this one. I said that oh, this building looks like the one in Accra. Mm -hmm. That was when I realized that no, there was actually, it was a trend. So mm -hmm. after seeing that, then I realized that, oh, maybe it might be something that cuts across. So I started talking to people about it who have been looking at these buildings and I find them interesting because the book that we published exchange exchange mm -hmm. there were some pages that we put some of those in it and we titled them sites of potential mm -hmm. because i knew there was something i wanted to do at the bottom mm -hmm. so in art we would think about them as potential mm -hmm. in the future you might come back to it differently mm -hmm. 
So after that, we never, I uh, never, um, I, I, I left it for a bit, and then later on, someone told me that there was one in Takrade, so I went to look at it. Eugene Jao, mm. there's on the way to his house, one of our colleagues. Mm. There's one of them there. Yeah, okay. They sold it for to a hotel. Oh, so yeah. the hotel has built all around it, and the silo is just there. Mm. So I went to look at that one too, and then um, later on, I went to Tema to the cocoa processing company to see the one that was there, and then. Tamale, they had told me that there was one here, but it was a wrong one I had seen. Mm. And then uh, a couple, two years ago, uh, there's an engineer we are working with here, a highway just next to the next side. Year, yes. My father introduced him to me because he was supposed to help me do a model, like to, no, uh, red clay, okay. to mm. dig the soil and do a, a test. test. Okay. Yeah. Because I was, I had already employed an architect and a draftsman in Kumas who had done the drawings of the silo, the ones that I showed. Yes. Because I had wanted to build an institution out of the shape of the shape. silo, okay. mm. with this train mounted no. within it and all that. So when, and he was telling me that, ah, but the silo, there's one in Tamar. And I said, mm. oh, I have not seen it. He said, oh, there's one just next to his office. Mm. So uh, then I came to see it, and I was like, oh wow, like I didn't, and then that was when the, I, I, and I even asked, and they said, oh, it belongs to Ibrahim Mahama, the president's <laughs> brother, <laughs> blah, so I was trying to follow up, blah, blah, but they, 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 I we didn't seem to know who it belonged to, and then just before COVID started, the government came out saying that, oh, they are selling their land, they are cutting it into pieces and selling it, so I went to see them to negotiate for the silo and the land, and that's how it came into being. Wow. So it was. Yes. Mm-hmm. So from that, the beginning, I didn't think about it. Mm-hmm. Even when I was doing my research on it and going there to take pictures and molds and other things, I didn't know. I was me. I just thought I, would, I could get a permit. That's why I showed the letter. Yes. The yes. one to that use I, the place. Yeah, just to use the place. <laughs> and then when they said, oh, it's, uh, they are going to sell it's it. Available. So now I'm like, okay, fine. If I know I can acquire it, then I can work to get money mm-hmm. to acquire it so that we can convert it into mm-hmm. a public mm-hmm. institution or something. Okay. Then you actually found out that it was you that was owning it because mm-hmm. that <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that name yeah. usually um, uh, causes a lot of confusion because yes. anytime, uh, yeah, not only in Ghana but outside Ghana, anytime you are doing a presentation, you need to mention that oh, this work is by Ibrahim mm-hmm. Muhammad. The first time, the first question they always ask, oh, is it the president? But then you have to say no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is not only in Tamil. <laughs> <No, yeah. laughs> So um, w- w- once you acquired it and you you started to, to f- and you the story once you get it you mm. know the story that comes with it mm. the mythical stories and all that um, mm. were you first of all afraid of 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 even though you knew uh, similar projects around the country but did you think that whatever they told you about the place was actually in some way true? Mm-hmm. Not at all, mm-hmm. because I, <coughs> I was one of very few people who knew what the building was. Okay. Because I was part of my PhD is actually on these buildings. There's a chapter which I dedicate just purely showing the images and talking about them. Yeah. Um, and as I said before, I'd already done a project in Accra where I'd covered it mm-hmm. and I'd navigated it, so I knew what it was in some ways. Mm-hmm. So I was describing it to the people here because they have never had the opportunity to see the building because they are looking at it from a singular point of view. But I'm looking at it from multiple perspectives because I've seen all the other ones and some of them give you glimpses into parts and all that. Uh, so I was telling them that oh, this is what it is and but I said, oh, but you know, they said it was this and that and then I said, yes, I know it can be this and that. But let's just, for me, even the, you know, as an artist, you learn a lot from it. But until I acquired it when I had the right Mm-hmm. to get by the pump and start pumping the water that's when once we started inhabiting going down the building that's when i actually realized that oh maybe some of the myths might have been real in some yeah, sense because yeah. it, you can be, you can begin to believe it yeah. when you start when you start inhabiting the space yeah. going down those people constructed a myth without being there yeah, but yeah. now that i have had the chance to go there yeah. i'm beginning to believe that yes maybe the myth could have been yeah. yes I mean, the myths could have been instigated by real events that might have happened. Happen, yes. It is possible that uh, people would have drowned in it mm-hmm. by uh, some accident. Yes. Uh-huh. So people may have known that a few people would have <laughs> fallen in it and drowned. And, and so they can, it can feed the myth. But um, like as uh, Ibrahim is saying, as an artist, 
even those stories sort of inspire you to go and find out if it is really true or not. It would also be that uh, somebody would have fallen, but through some miracle would have also stepped out and people didn't see them. Yeah, yeah so um, it is, but even with a, a lot of places, I, I also remember uh, in my master's project, my MFA, I did, I, I created a, or I, I organized a funeral service for Meridian Hotel in Tema. And it was also surrounded with such myths. But also going there in person, I also met with people who had, that one had squatters in it. And it is also true that people had fallen through the elevator shafts because mm -hmm. at a point the hotel was sort of only the skeleton mm -hmm. surviving. And so imagine uh, how many floors, so it's such a high building and it had uh, elevator shafts mm -hmm. that had no elevators in them. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that when, and people, I mean, the squatters were people too who were drug abusers and all those things. So sometimes maybe somebody's drunk, wakes up at night and then falls. <laughs> yeah. So those stories were there. And so they are real stories, but because, as uh, Ibrahim is saying, the people who encourage these stories are also from a distance. They are not the, they, they, the way they can add to uh, story upon story to create a myth here yeah, is important. But to demystify that myth, we are acquiring it and going under and trying to dig out the sand and all this. There's a way in which we can also deal with this myth, demystify it, break it apart so that, uh, because I can also imagine that if it's such a myth continues to exist, even when the space becomes accessible to people, people may not go there because they say, hey, I don't want to be in charge with any ghosts <laughs> here. Yeah, but if we realize that there are no ghosts there, probably then people can engage it. So it's good to have the myth, myth but it is also good to, through pragmatic and practical means, to break the myth. Okay. All right. So, um, Mr. Brian, when um, you actually pumped out the water and everything, the people around working with you. I know they are very believers because they <laughs> haven't seen what you, you saw. When, when you told them that this is what you're going to do out of it, was there some kind of warnings or like this? He was so excited. Mm -hmm. Ibrahim, one of the guys, he was like, ah, you know, like the same guy who came when we, uh, we, we went there for the first time. He's the me. same guy who took us to the the, well, uh, the Wamale place, oh, the, yeah, yeah, the, the same, we went to Yendi and all that. Mm. Um, yeah, so he was like, oh, when Mr. Brian, this work, so, no, no, I was, uh, <laughs> he was so confident. Mm. Uh, so even like there are some, uh, you see, outside there is a, is a uh, there's a water body. Yes. Mm. There are some fishes that we caught inside mm. that he personally took the fishes out alive and he mm. came to put them in the water mm. just to yeah. preserve them. Yeah. A water tank, tank yeah. outside. Yes. Yeah, so he, the guys there are so confident. Mm. And I think sometimes it's also because they themselves, they're also in their own world. Well, yeah, they yeah, smoke yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. So their reality and our reality is not the same. Yeah, yeah. Because if, as I was saying yesterday, the kind of confidence and the work that they were doing under normal circumstances, we brought people there who were not from there, but it didn't last. Mm. When they came and worked for one, they said, oh, this work, we cannot do mm. it. But these guys, they felt, and it's also because I've built a relationship with them now, mm. so they know that whatever be the case, because yesterday when I showed the uh, slides and I showed the images when we finished, they were so excited mm -hmm. because they didn't believe that they would have been, they would have been acknowledged and celebrated so much as people who've yeah. paid all of this that we are mm. possible. Mm. Uh -huh. So that was what I started with the beginning, saying that we have to know, irrespective of the class, the, we have to find ways in which we can somehow flatten things so mm -hmm. that everyone can have their place within there. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, still on you, mm -hmm. labor, your artwork has to do with labor a lot. So, um, and this, um, I, I saw Ikutia, uh, Akutia, mm -hmm. and I saw this, mm -hmm. and I saw the labor involved and all that. And in your presentation yesterday, you made mention about um, how we shouldn't look at um, maybe even Kayaye and all that as in, in, in a different, we should look at it in a different direction. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about art, we, do, we, we, don't, we don't see these things. How important is labor to art in relation to this particular um, project in Kumavoye and SCCA other projects? 
Yeah, Bernard, do you want to take it? Then I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, from I mean, today I've even shared some images from the talk uh, on Black Star Lines yes. uh, WhatsApp page. And the last set of images I sent, uh, uh, I wrote, um, I had a line, labor never yeah, rests. Yeah. yeah, and um, it's, it's as if it was a response also to the beginning image you used yesterday, uh, living things do not rest. Yes. Yeah, but uh, that is also the truth uh, of Ibrahim's practice about labor, the importance of labor, but also generally in art. Um, often in, in the art that we were taught, as everybody <laughs> in the world over was taught, it's like it's a type of art where um, product is all made by the artist. So maybe a painting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's a beautiful painting, and it's the artist uh, ingenuity <laughs> that has created it. Um, when uh, the art teaching or the art education was changing uh, in the late 90s in KNUST uh, through the work of Karikacha uh, Sebi, um, uh, we started uh, realizing that even the fact of a painting is more than just canvas and uh, um, brush. Brush, brush and maybe acrylic or oils because wood would have been felled for the stretcher to be created. Nails were made and bought and used and then the fabric, the fabric that is uh, uh, linen or cotton that some type of labor would have produced all these things. But we used to take it for granted. It was just known that an artist paints onto uh, a, a media or use a applied medium onto a support, and that is it. What happened to all that happened before the support received the medium? All that is considered now. And so this is the importance of labor. So even if, so art production in this contemporary dispensation takes into consideration some things that are much more deeper or uh, involve so many others, so many worlds come and crisscross. And so uh, Ibrahim's work is only making us see, it's almost like digging also into the, uh, into the void of the Nkuma silo. Yeah. We are just seeing the many aspects of an artwork. For example, yesterday, the reality of putting even the, the, the screen up so that we can come and see the images, the films and all this was actual labor. People were sweating, people were trying to get it right. Um, and you see, it's such that when it comes your way, you can't stop for it. I fear heights and all this. But when they were lifting the metal, I had to help. Yeah, you, you can't hide away from it. And this is the importance of labor in art. You, um, it must work. Even the, the sound was not working. Yes. The technical thing was not working. So we had to call this guy, Selom yes. and his friend. Then they came. Running around when yes. during the program, um, they, to them, because they are sound people, they realized that the sound was not good enough. They wanted, they it, to write wanted it to work. So they, despite the fact that the presentation, you know, elsewhere, as you were saying, like in Europe or in America, people come to perform their expected duty, duty. duty. like they exactly. just come, okay, you called me to come and join this, they'll do it, and then they'll sit down. Here, like, people go beyond themselves, and that is the importance of labor in art production. You want the thing to be good enough for all of us, uh -huh. it's not, and even the audience. You know, some, I wasn't, the first time the audience clapped at one image, yeah. I was like, ah, but it's not time for you to clap, yeah. but already, so they appreciate it and they show it. So it's, um, for me, this is the beauty of the making it, it's also about this dis uh, dis mystification. Like, yes, we know we are all involved, we are all putting our sweat. So uh, it's not like some artist is doing something so you can't disturb them. You, you, you must participate, you must be part. So this is the importance of it. And when eventually we're asking people to also ask questions or make contributions, you see the contributions that came, they were not, even the one, the guy who said he didn't understand. I don't think he was asking for understanding of the work. He wanted to, he, he, he I'm guessing he wanted to know 
how else he can also participate. participate. And this is the importance. And, um, and then the doctor also said um, yeah, that it is philosophy. And you know, he's happy that people don't even understand. Because if you don't understand, you would want to know more. Uh -huh. This is really the essence of labor in, in arts. Okay. Yeah. I also Thank think you. it's, uh, uh, yeah, it was that thing, uh, trying to own the means of production. Mm -hmm. Like when you are, when imagine like um, working on these silos yes. or working on a, a what's the word for SCCA, the Kutia, that we were doing, yes. and putting the clay, making a decision to put the clay on the floor. Like if we if we if we didn't own the space mm -hmm. and you were renting the space, I even tell your landlord that you're going to put clay and cow dung on his <laughs> on his floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't. Yeah, imagine what you have to go through. Mm -hmm. um, the um, so the and the silo. Now that I own it, I can excavate it. All this, the talk we had all yesterday was because I placed myself in that position to be able to use my own labor and sweat mm -hmm. in order to raise the capital that was needed to acquire the space, so it can allow us the de the new degrees of freedoms. Uh -huh. Because labor is also connected to that idea of uh, freedom. Because sometimes when you invest labor into something, it's able to transform and shift that thing so that the way humankind would have experienced it would change. But I'm not just thinking about this in relation to humankind. Now. I'm also thinking about it in relation to ecology and other things. Because in going down the silo, you suddenly begin to realize that, oh, through the labor that we've put together to do this, da, 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 you realize that, oh, maybe. There are things that we are yet to account for, like mm -hmm. the bats that are down there, mm -hmm. the fishes, the lizards, the owls, mm -hmm. and all these things. How can we also use that axle of labor to expand the space, the, the, with, uh, maybe the new level of sensi sens uh, sensitivity that we've acquired? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't have sense. Sensitivity is not just something that is there. Yeah. So you are quiet mm. when there is a condition that you find yourself in, mm. and then you allow yourself to slow down and say that, oh, with this, I have to act this way, or have to behave this way, I have to take these steps and these decisions. Mm. Those are some of the things that have somehow destroyed our society because we have mm. never had the time to sit down and say, oh, based on this, this is what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to go in this direction in this direction and it's the same questions I used to ask myself about a silo but why is it that for the last 54 years we never used any of them couldn't we just with this labor in the last three months see what we've been able to do mm. we've done something very historic yesterday was the first time that bodies had come together within this space to actually discuss mm. and find new futures and all that it could have happened in the last 54 years mm. but it's just the act of understanding what uh, labor is how we come together, how we produce, mm -hmm. how we take ownership of those production system, and how we allow that to somehow create the kind of futures that we expect. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Mr. Bernard, uh, yesterday we had a, I, I want to say yesterday was more like, I don't know whether to call it a political science um, <laughs> lecture, or to call it a history lecture, <laughs> and, and, or even biology, but we, at the point in time, we had a great people also yes. coming in with their cow down mm. stories yes, and all yes, that. Mm. Um, politically, looking at that structure, looking at um, in Chroma, and earlier I had a chat with you, you mentioned something about legacy, mm. and artists also being politicians on mm. their own. So um, if, if you look at all these, these, these pointers, and look at this building right now, and what the future, like Mr. Brian just rightly said, um, potential, the future mm -hmm. and the potential of, of this building, politically and artistic, um, what message does it send to politicians themselves mm -hmm. and people in the community? What, what message does this? Okay, so first for me, I would, I mean, I'm of the view that uh, art is politics. And there is um, um, the schools of thought that do agree to this, and those are some of the schools of thought that I subscribe to, and that a lot of us also within the Black Star Alliance uh, with the field of thought. Um, it's uh, Rancière, uh, the uh, philosopher Jacques Rancière, 
who thinks that art um, that art is politics, the, and politics is not straightforward. It's not. Um, it's not, uh, let's say, uh, everybody living happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, politics is full of antagonism. Politics is full of strife and contention. But this strife and contention helps to build up something. And it is out of these disagreements that we um, can create something. Uh, so usually we would like to uh, differentiate between politics and partisanship. Because generally in Ghana, or in even people's understanding generally in the world, uh, when people suggest the idea of politics, they assume it is partisanship. You belong to one party, you follow them, and you don't question. Um, and a lot of politicians actually, who actually have the name politicians, are partisan practitioners. I argue that artists, a lot of artists who are aware of their conditions and are finding ways with which to challenge these conditions are political. And this is what uh, 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 I see in all this. Um, it is political that a space that has, been not, uh, has not been used for 54 years, suddenly in one night, it has been populated with people. It is a political act. It's a political situation, assuming even if nothing happens there again, it goes down in history that last night this thing happened, it has changed somebody's way of looking at things. And this is really what is behind the politics that we sort of push forward, uh, what we, we stand for. How do we change the way people perceive the world so that uh, they can also uh, be proud to own the, 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 the means of production. As he said, uh, maybe I'll just uh, make a quick uh, caveat or detour with uh, somebody like Shatawali. Is that Shatawali, uh, um, I'm not a wild fan of his, but there's a certain attitude that he, he brings to the space of entertainment or music. He owns his own studio. So as Ibrahim was saying, if you own your own studio and you haven't hired the, the place, you don't rush and do any type of music and then get out. Yeah, yeah. You can take your time if you really are into the, the, the field. You take your time and do something. Or you can also produce so much. But on your terms, and this is really what is important, the freedom is inherent in being able to do the thing that you think is emancipatory, that uh, um, releases people on your own terms. You're not at at anybody's uh, 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 mercy. Nobody is sponsoring what you are doing, therefore you are forced to mention their name. Uh, uh, and if you don't mention it, the sponsorship leaves. You know, this is the freedom. So if you have such freedom, then it is possible, and that's the potential, it is possible to inspire another person that, oh, yes, I can. I mean, look at even people, our mothers and uh, uncles and uh, aunties who, um, let's say, they sell, yeah. their own, let's say, somebody said, watch it, seller. Yeah. She sells, she goes to the market, buys her own produce, and comes to cook and sell. Compared to somebody who is working for another person who sells the watch. Yeah. yeah, you can, the one selling her own watch can choose to give some jara. Yeah. Yes. But the one who is selling for her cannot. She doesn't have the freedom to be able to make that decision. So these are, and they are, they are small gestures, but they are important. You know, we're talking about uh, uh, politicians who will use the funds that the state has allocated to come and do something for a community and then ask them to praise him. Yes. <laughs> you are meant to do that. Uh -huh. But the artist who through their own efforts, they've been trying hard to scrape here and scrape there, and then make something for the community. Now, who should be celebrated? <laughs> uh -huh. this, are the, this is the political question. The person who has done it, because, I mean, you don't, the artist need not, because it's also one of the people, need not necessarily build such a space. But it has happened, because we think, as we said, legacy. It is for the future. It is not, I mean, nobody stays on the world forever, in the world forever, so we will all leave this. But when we leave it, so long as we have established it very well, 
we have the hope that it will stay on and help other people that we don't know. For instance, as we said, Kwame Nkrumah would have dreamt these things into being. They've not been used, but now they are being used. Uh -huh. So something has happened from that legacy. And if everybody were to think in these sense, uh, terms of legacy, then one would do some, another one would come and build on it, and then we'd all be going. Not rather grabbing, 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 which is the political. The, the, the politics, the yeah, partisan, like, the partisan <laughs> politics, where everybody grabs, and then in future, what will we have um, to to show others? And so this is really what it's all about. Okay. That's why I showed that text message. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I just allowed you guys a moment just to read it, to really understand that these things are just not. They are not ordinary. Mm -hmm. uh, it really takes a lot of work be able to overcome these things mm. to work and act within this manner. Mm. So um, I remember one time you said, um, Daddy said, at some point in time, this has to stop. <laughs> and, and you said that, and you just said something, Daddy, that it never stops. It never stops. <laughs> um, I, I, I have this feeling that I, I feel like every 10 years, 5 years, 15 years, there's some kind of evolution that takes place. I don't know how it does, but it just happens. I don't, I, and I, I, I've not found any pattern for it, but I just yeah. happens. It's been close to like 60 years since Ghana's yeah. 60 years of independence. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Kwame Koma, this is all close to like 50 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking at the pattern you have created so far. I don't know whether you've noticed it from Mr. Dawson, who was um, part of the first uh, people at King mm -hmm. to do the art, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now to. Um, Dr. Duta yeah. and now in Kuma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's like this, this kind of this pattern mm -hmm. because they, they were in that era before you, but you have come to kind of revive it. Go back, yeah, yeah. go back in time to bring them. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's like, I don't know whether it was catches, but the kind of like a flash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go back okay. in time. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And today I was just like processing everything. I was like, Maybe you are a ghost whisper. <laughs> it's yes, given the work you've done so far, you seem to find dead things and bring them back to life, mm -hmm. or kind of tell their story or their journey mm -hmm. so around. So the very of my question is, when when you, how do you come up with these thoughts, and where do you place yourself? Because I believe that sometimes they might be scary. And sometimes unimaginable. But at the end of the day, like what happened yesterday that in Koroma is well, mm. it happened. It was unimaginable. It was scary, but it happened because we were thinking about people's safety. And yeah. um, Uncle Ben has said that yeah. um, you said something that and last night I was laughing <laughs> whilst yeah. I was trying to yeah. sleep. He said that that even adults are more careless than children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this this is scary. Um, unimaginable. How, how do you please yourself when you are thinking about these things with your with your books and mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. with you? Mm -hmm. Honestly, for me, I'm very thankful for the background I came from, from Kumasi, like KNUST, as Ben was talking about, with a shift within the curriculum in the late 90s, uh, coming to meet people, teachers like Caricature, Castro, George, but then George had just come back from the UK to do some poetry teaching at KMUST when I was in third year. Mm -hmm. So he was teaching us together with caricature and Castro also joined caricature. So Castro is uh, simply a Kisir Ubra for his mm -hmm. one of the lecturers and George Akrechum mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So there were these three guys who were working very hard together. Of course there is uh, another lecturer, uh, Aminuke, Dorothy Aminuke, mm -hmm. who is uh, uh, an artist also. She's done some really important work. So. And also many other lecturers, of mm -hmm. course, but I'm just talking about the core, like with regards to uh, trying to encourage students to be a lot more experimental, mm -hmm. to push the forms within their work. Of course, Bernard was an artist already practicing then, so there was so much inspiration. Like we were always hearing about Bernard Akwe Jackson, like the, the perfor performance, <laughs> as, uh, like Nigeria is a performance mm -hmm. artist. Yeah, and I met Bernard a couple of times, and we were always so inspired, like, mm -hmm. oh, like the artist who is really doing art, which is not the ones that we know. Because if we had gone to Accra, 
all you would have seen are the market women being painted, which yes. was in the artist alliance. Mm-hmm. But, but Bernard will do performances, maybe he'll be on the streets. Or, but just this, the fact that he had changed the site and also he was using the body and even the language and everything, it was so inspiring, you know. It was a shift away from what we knew. So uh, pedagogy with regards to education was very important in mm-hmm. understanding what we wanted to create. Mm-hmm. Because in most schools, they would teach artists to make art with the tools mm-hmm. of art. Mm-hmm. Because we know what art is already. Mm-hmm. But we, it's more or less like, okay, we know what art is. But how can we go beyond, go beyond what art is? How can we create something which is not art, but yet to be art? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And those conditions that we keep referring to all come together to form this. So when I'm thinking about, when I have an idea, first and foremost, I think it starts, my ideas are always inspired by maybe other things that I've done. Mm-hmm. And as Bernard was saying in Contemporary Art yesterday, that we are always trying to find new positions. So even as an artist, every day when I wake up, what I slept with is not the same ideas I, mm-hmm. just, I wake up with. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm not a factory where when I go mm-hmm. to bed and I wake up, the next day the recipe is the same. No, mm-hmm. it's not a product. Yeah. I'm trying to understand the world with its complexities and every day it changes. Mm-hmm. Even with COVID alone, the whole world has changed, mm-hmm. you see? So the next day, something might happen. Even yesterday, I remember uh, when Trump said he had a coronavirus. It affected the, the stock market. Everything, all like prices and things were crashing. Uh-huh. So the world is not as simple as we think it is. So you, ca- you can't always hold the same views. And that's what partisanship does. Because you feel that you are uh, affiliated or you are obliged to an organization regardless whether it is good or bad but in art you can use your condition to even criticize yourself mm-hmm. or the condition itself mm-hmm. uh, you are within something uh, let's say I'm, u- I'm an artist like one of the best examples mm-hmm. is that i'm using uh, the labor of let's say the, the people i'm working mm-hmm. with yes. to make artworks which end up sell to me institutions mm-hmm. and then the money that i earn from it is the same money i come to use to do these projects that we can all have rights and access to mm-hmm. But I could have chosen the ones I uh, use that, even if it's an exploited labor, I mm-hmm. use it to earn private property. Uh-huh. So uh, those things, they are the, 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 those are where, the, for me, the, when you're thinking about imagination and all that, those are where some of the things, the questions lie. Uh-huh. And of course, you can't let anything scare you. Like mm-hmm. when you, honestly, I always say that if you have an idea and it doesn't scare you, we have to be suspicious. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's what I was saying yesterday yeah. that sometimes we want to do it and prove that yes, it can be done. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It can be done. Like, and it's something that we can all also yeah. undo, and not in a motivational sense, but mm-hmm. also just to prove a point that after all, the world or the stories in the world cannot be told from one po- perspective mm-hmm. or one point. Uh-huh. All right. Let me just also add a bit to that. You, you know, um, for instance, if um, your idea doesn't scare you. Uh, I mean, it's also not to scare you to so that you stop. You don't need. But the the fear is that it, it puts it puts some realization on you, and uh, ideally from that you should be motivated to see if you can challenge the fear. Because if you are able to challenge the fear, then you kick the fear aside and then fear fighting yourself again with another idea. And uh, often we rather say that we like to surprise you. Mm-hmm. If your artwork doesn't surprise you, then it's, you don't need to do it. Exactly. Yeah, if, uh, if you, because if you know it too much, like you know what is there to achieve, and then you achieve only what you knew you would achieve. For me, it's not too satisfying. I think if you rather achieve something that you were not expecting, mm-hmm. that is where Success. you get a miracle. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I wasn't expecting this, yeah. now it is here. Now that it is here, it encourages me to know that, oh, okay, then another thing is possible. Yes, exactly. That's the thing. Like, one of the examples also is the sax. When I started working with the sax, Mm -hmm. and you are dealing with the aesthetics flat, Mm -hmm. so the sax can cover buildings, Mm -hmm. objects, and all that. But with the shoemaker boxes, you realize that there are objects in themselves Mm -hmm. which are not flat. So they have different (laughs) angles. Uh So what the sax couldn't do, this one can do. Then even the shoemaker boxes, I was using some of those fish, uh, the, the, the plywood they use is smoking fish. fish okay. So I realized that, oh, but the smell can, 
So I use it to do another expression, combine it with something, and then you realize, oh, but it can do this. Then you combine it with a piece of building architecture, and like, oh, this, the airplane, and you realize, oh, the airplane, you are quite. So one thing leads you into another. Mm. Each time you realize that, oh, the sensibility can be expanded, mm. can be expanded, can be expanded. Even with drones, mm. for my own work. I remember yesterday when I was showing the video and the guy saw the bridge. It was, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, remarkable. Yeah, you yeah, wonder, yeah. like, yeah. like what the hell? Like, like, how yeah. you, you wouldn't have gotten that yeah. yes. sometime, some few years, years ago. Yeah. It was yeah. not possible. Yeah. Yeah. There was one of the greatest artists that ever lived, yeah. Robert Smithson. Yeah. He died like he that. Died, he died, he had created uh, in the oh, 60s, yeah. 70s, a very famous work. Yeah. And it was just a, a jetting, uh, called Spiral Jetty. It was um, an extension of land yeah. into a lake okay. and of course he could have just taken a picture but the way it had created an image he, a, a he wanted he had to take it from Top. overhead yes. but drones were not there so uh, here uh, we are told that he was trying like they, they, they flew a helicopter over yes. there they yes. were trying to take, take the picture and then they, yes. they crashed oh. yeah had it been this time you would have taken so yes. many angles yes. with the drone so the technologies that come to meet us, I mean, of course, drones were not originally meant yes. for us, but now their technology has come. So we make use of it and, and then put it into the art. Okay. So um, you you um, you mentioned um, the jutsak. I was going to come about that, and also um, the, the the hand on the jutsak, that particular hand on the jutsak. Yes, when I saw it and you spoke about how the women will come to the mm -hmm. airplane this too. So I was trying to see the connection. Mm -hmm. Most of them here the dream is always to go to Mecca. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now going to Mecca, that's where plane comes come to your mind. <laughs> so in, in just as I was just processing this I was like, yes, maybe they come there to see and say probably make promise to themselves that my plane jump back when I'm going to Mecca, probably will be taking maybe one on these this. planes. Yeah. And most of them will probably also have that same Mark, and like you spoke about how you work with people here, do the exhibition outside, then bring them in to put something that will benefit all of them. Mm -hmm. So there's some kind of connection, even though they are not the same women that did the jute sacks, but they are also mm -hmm. benefiting. They're the conditions. same people. Yeah, similar conditions. Yeah, yes, similar mm -hmm. conditions and all that. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, I'm just trying to put that kind of thought, mm -hmm. but what, what I want to ask is um, if you have the chance to actually um, map out, I saw your maps, if you successfully map out these things, these plots and create, make Tamale, change Tamale into, let me say, the hub of contemporary art and all that, what will be, in terms of education, do you feel that your work Mr. Bernard Beck, I've seen it. I, I usually say the man in gold because he's yeah. <laughs> yeah, a gold man. He's yeah, a gold man. Yeah. Your work, do you think that it's been 50 plus years The teaching has to change? Not only in arts, but in science, um, in all aspects of our education, teaching has to change. Given, you've, you've done an example, not only in emancipation, but with the assemblies man, mm -hmm. Do you think? Education, we need to have another educational reform, um, either mentally or just the academic area. I think in both, we just we need it because the mental emancipation is what allows me to be able to do and think within a manner. Okay. That's why I want to be able to expand it to other people. Yeah. So by collecting these objects or building red clay and SCCA. Mm -hmm. It allows us to have a space which can, it's almost like a portal. Mm -hmm. So just as the silo is a portal, the silo is a different kind of a portal. Mm -hmm. All black holes do not lead to the same place. Mm -hmm. All portals do not lead to the same place. Mm -hmm. There are some portals that lead elsewhere. They might lead to another multi multiverse. Some of them might lead into the same universe to understand multiple aspects of it. Some of them might even lead you into the same galaxy that you find yourself within, just a different planet or something. So SCCA, what it does, Red Clay, what it does in terms of education and what the silo do, they are all different things. But at the end of the day, they all come together to somehow feed the way we can relook really at the world. 
I think one of the particular reasons why I was excited about the silo was because it's it's more like something which inspires you to create things and then you use part of the histories and residues of it to create a work which accumulates capital and then you use the capital and the spaces you've created out of it to come back and rescue the old. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. wow. That's 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 one thing that, that's one lesson that I've learned a lot now. And I remember caricature when we were in school back um, doing our masters, he used to teach us some of these things, but they were so difficult to understand mm -hmm. because if you haven't done it, sometimes it's so difficult to understand the significance mm -hmm. of it. But it's after you've done it. You've gone through the work and you've done it, and then when you are sitting to reflect, that's when you say, "Oh, so this is the thing caricature was yeah. trying to teach." Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But once you are working on it, I think also subconsciously because he has done the work already by laying the foundation in your head. Yeah. When you are working on doing something, it's subconsciously it's also guiding you. Mm -hmm. Some choices and decisions you have to make, you be like, "Oh, this thing is not. This is not it," mm -hmm. and you always have that feeling. And I think a lot of us don't listen to ourselves because our society is based so much on trying to achieve and amass. Even when something else is not right, so let me do it anyway. But if you know deep down in your heart and your mind, oh, this is not a let me try it some other way. Maybe that might be the right. Uh -huh, then, uh -huh. So that the emancipation helps us to be able to at least break away from all of these things and to be able to at least tackle the things that are much more pertinent within mm -hmm. the educational structure and system. So for me, education also is very important, and um, and education. So there are many modes of education, okay. and uh, what I would wish for education is um, if um, people seek to be better in what they do. You know, sometimes there's there's one way knowing what to do and therefore doing it well. Yeah. Uh -huh. But if you do something well, you become too conversant and too complacent. Yes. And so I will, education should be such that you are not satisfied with the, the condition that you are in right now and that you want to know better. You want, because there's always a better way of doing something. Okay. But that better way of doing something also is not there. You have to go and find it. Uh -huh. So, uh, and that's what uh, 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 Ibrahim was saying also about the teaching and thing. I think that, for example, if you are into film, um, yes, for example, in the context of Ghana, you can go to NAFTI and learn how to make films. But assuming you went to NAFTI and even learned how to make films, you will know how to make films only as to what pertains to NAFTI. Yes. Yes. But beyond that, you should also be curious to know how. And Indian people make their movies, how Korean people make their movies, how Russian people make their movies. You see, when then, why in Hollywood, why do they make the type of movies? Then maybe you are only learning all those things so that it teaches you not to make movies like they do, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but you do it the way you alone make. And, and so knowing how, and that's education knowing how things are done so that you may do yours differently. Yeah. I think this is really important. Uh, often people see something and then um, assume, and, we, and there's the tendency to assume or presume that, oh, uh, for example, when Ibrahim made an example of uh, modernist art, especially mo art from the modern period mm -hmm. where uh, let's say it was very like, many scribbles or mm -hmm. splashes of color. Yes. Uh -huh. When you see something like that, it is it would be very immature to um, condemn it as oh, after all, this anybody can do it. Yes. If anybody could do it, anybody would have done <laughs> it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but because it is that particular artist who did it, it is not just anybody. The, thoughts, the research, the, the back and forth that you would have gone with yourself, as you were uh, saying, you have to critique yourself, uh, is this enough, is this all you can do? Uh -huh. All that results in somebody that's doing a, a scribble. It's not the same scribble when a five-year-old also makes a scribble. Uh -huh. there, may be, there may be a certain, the, the older person may be returning to a certain child in himself or herself. 
But it is not a child. It is this child that is informed with experiences. Education is this thing. And it is important that in any field that we are, we want to get the best form of education in that field. We may not afford money to go to a formal school and therefore have that. But sometimes even that condition maybe is not important. Those who it is important for, they will seek it and go and, uh, and get that type of education. But for me, I, uh, people who will try, like yes, we're talking about uh, Latif, how he'll be trying things out, uh, trying to fix his father's motive. Yes, ah, that is the education he is getting. Yes. And if you follow it um, faithfully, you would, uh, you would get the education that you need to move on. If not, you just uh, get a formal education, you also went and sat in a classroom, <laughs> you have graduated. But the education is not in you. I think there's something we say. Um, <laughs> there's something we say in uh, in um, uh, school, like when you go to school, don't don't don't, don't go through the school. Let the school go through, go through you. This <laughs> education. The thing has to affect you that you yourself you are aware that something has changed about you. You will now you will see the world. And usually, a lot of educated people, like people who are truly educated, they will. They don't worry about too many things, like as you say, material gain. Yeah, I'm doing the thing for a legacy, for a, a greater good. And if, like assuming you have, you go to school and therefore you have four Ferraris. Mm. Will you drive all those Ferraris to <laughs> one day? No. But if you have a center like this, you don't need to even be there for people to come and see how the place functions. And things. This is really what I think a good education. So I think uh, we will go with our final words. Mm -hmm. At least we have done well. I'm um, finished seven minutes. So, <laughs> done well. so um, final words, Mr. Ryan. No, let me let, let yes, let me come to you for the final word. Mm -hmm. um, you have worked with Mr. Brian. You from I think you've inspired him and um, he's inspired, he's inspired you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and like you said yesterday, there's no green hair now. <laughs> so, um, what what do you think the future holds for us? Do, do you think um, you have done enough um, for Mr. Brian to take over and also do? Uh, I mean, one can never do enough. So that is where I'll start from. I, I, I can never have done enough. Uh, all our colleagues, IB, Kelvin, Adwamwa, uh, uh, Tracy Thompson, like all um, Sakite, Kuji, we can never have done enough. Uh, we can always do better. It's like the, the school teacher, you know, even the person who comes, who comes first in class, they say, could do better. I wonder which better <laughs> that person could do. But it also means, it challenges you that you don't feel comfortable and com uh, complacent where I've reached, I have arrived. Uh, I think we should always be moving. Um, even let's assume we have achieved so much here, then it means that it is the time to start another mm -hmm. thing. And so this is really what it is. Um, I could never have finished inspiring Ibrahim, and Ibrahim too cannot finish inspiring me or all of us. Mm -hmm. I think we should just, um, maybe as this uh, hymn says, count your blessings, name them one by one. As we count our blessings, we will also know that there are failures, there are faults, how do we learn through these things? I think they are more important. And for me, as in Ibrahim's presentation yesterday, we saw that in a lot of the images, children were featured. Uh -huh. This, uh, me, a lot of things, I can honestly say that a lot of the things I know and I have made use of in my older life have been things that my eyes would have seen when I was very small. Uh -huh. Maybe I wouldn't have, have understood them. But I keep going back right. to them. So, and uh, for example, and if you are lucky on the way to you meet people like Karikacha who will challenge you to even recognize the things you saw. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if you, you may not have known it. You know it, but you have taken it for granted. And then somebody's prompting or something somebody says, an yes, older yes. person would ignite it. And so it's important that as children and the younger people, they should have these experiences. Um, as Ibrahim said yesterday also that a parent 
these days, uh, contemporary parents. Yeah. Why, what place will the parents take a child? KFC. <laughs> like, so that is teaching the materialistic <laughs> culture. Yeah. Yes, if you make money, go and eat it. Uh, something that, and you, what are you eating? Right? Eating something with so much fat and things yeah. that will kill your body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the parents who challenge the child to let the child go and see art. Yeah, you may not be satisfied in your mind, but mentally, spiritually, there's a certain satisfaction that will let you later get even more to eat. Uh-huh. So these are the things that I would uh, I will leave with us. <laughs> You see, we believe very weird things. We are <laughs> 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 Once the, uh, the old man has taken his bath. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Bernard has not an old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bernard has beautifully uh, concluded everything. As it's just we are striving, as I said yesterday, to create a space that somehow inspires even we ourselves to never stop and always thinking that the world can be a much better place than we think that it is even as we are striving to create because if not all these new notes of even creating a plane with a mm-hmm. silo and then creating a shuttle mm-hmm. like a rocket yeah, they're all ideas i'm working on that i want to achieve yeah, yeah. so they'll say you are going to um, launch the space um, <laughs> why not yeah but why not but mm-hmm. it's literally because when when the plane is on the ground the way you experience it is different when you turn it yeah. and then when you open the inside and someone has the chance to look inside mm-hmm. you know sometimes by just the shift in a position of, of an object mm-hmm. it's very different and i already do that in my work mm-hmm. by putting thousands of things together and then it uh, inspires mm-hmm. us different so why not even this further mm-hmm. particularly even now in this age where the space race has begun again mm-hmm. but interesting thing about me the reason why i was thinking about that silo structure was because Back in the 60s, during the space race, when the when the US and the USSR yeah. were trying China, to yes. go, to go to space first, um, here we were building silos to store food. food yes. So we were concentrating on the Earth. Right, yeah. So I was trying to combine those two things, mm-hmm. and also particularly now in the age that we find ourselves, mm-hmm. we realize again and again because of, due to the the global crisis, pandemic. Uh, farmers in India committing suicide all the time because uh, of uh, they are not getting the right subsidies and mm-hmm. India. But at the same time, you have more and more like in, like the country as India mm-hmm. uh, launching uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, rockets, rockets. Uh-huh, joining in the space race and all that. Mm-hmm. Of course, some of these technologies we need. But for myself, I'm trying to really understand the place that the world is in now. Mm-hmm. How can we combine both the the heavenly ambitions in terms of mm. and also just the earth mm. protecting the earth at the same time mm. because if there is one thing that the earth has suffered after the post-industrial age mm. humanity has never been the same mm. before industrialization the plastic oh, we didn't never had this problem with plastic yes. this morning my 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 mom was making tubani so i was just watching the process mm. and they, she was taking the leaves and then she was Good. pouring it and then she would wrap it. Wrap it and I even at the side I, I always go to Fatal Bicycle and go and buy food in the ra- wrap, leaves. Yes. And I'll come and sit on the mm-hmm. top and I'll eat it. And I'm like, if this thing falls at the back right now, mm-hmm. it will just go back into the ground. Yeah, it will decompose. Yes. It will decompose. Yes. You know, so those are the questions. How can we become better people mm-hmm. than we are? Even if we strive and do all the necessary things to become the best of who we are, we continuously have to strive to be much better people. Because the world is unequal, and no matter how much we try to make it equal, it will always still be unequal. Mm-hmm. So we always have to keep going back to it again and again and again and again. It's like trying to strive towards a certain utopia, but it's not. It's not just a utopia as you think that it will never happen. Mm-hmm. But definitely one day it will come to mm-hmm. pass. It might not be now. It might not be in the next hundred years. Mm-hmm. Maybe it might be in the next millennia. But right. the most important thing is that, as Obama said. We move, we face forward. <laughs> <laughs> face forward. Yes. Mm-hmm.